It's a beautiful day on Grand Bahama Island and we want to go snorkeling. Ricky Richardson, our guide to the island, took us about 13 miles west of Freeport along the Queens Highway to Paradise Cove at Dead Man's Reef. Once privately owned until 1996, it became a resort and in 2001 was renamed Paradise Cove Beach Resort. But the reef was always Dead Man's Reef. Barry, the owner, told me the reef got its name because a lot of ships and boats get caught on the reef and if you don't know your way around, you will be dead in the water. Okay, I've been warned. I can truly see why this place is a paradise. The northern coastline is swamp and mangroves and the approximately 100 mile long southern coastline is shallow, so any reef is only accessible by boat. Dead Man's Reef, however, is 150 yards from the shore. You can literally walk out to it. But there's more to it than this. In cooperation with Reef Ball Foundation and other environmental organizations, in 2013, about 300 reef balls were placed to form an artificial reef. It forms a chain 150 yards long, parallel to the shore, and is 50 yards from the shore. Constructed from special material with pH additives similar to seawater and shaped to mimic a natural reef, the structure is compatible with marine organisms from corals and sponges to fish and turtles. The hollow structure provides shelter and the porous nature of the concrete allows corals and sponges to anchor and grow, like this tiny rose coral with rose lace coral branching out this young southern stingray sifts along the sandy bottom, feeding on small shellfish, worms, shrimp, crab, and even small fish. Paradise Cove has the largest artificial reef in the entire Bahamian archipelago. Reef communities are made up of many different fish, each with its own job and specific diet. Some are grazers and keep algae growth in check, while others, like wrasse, are carnivores. Many of the smaller wrasse are cleaner fish. These juvenile princess parrotfish mimic the behavior of cleaner wrasse. When you have a number of cleaner fish together, it's referred to as a cleaning station, and that's one sign of a healthy reef. I've moved completely away from the artificial reef towards the natural reef, and I've spotted a turtle. This is a green sea turtle, the largest hard shell of all the sea turtles. They get about 35 to 41 inches long and can weigh in up to 397 pounds. The green sea turtle is endangered due to harvesting of their eggs, hunting of the adults, being caught in fishing gear and nets, and lost of nesting beach sites. They also have natural predators such as tiger sharks to contend with. Fortunately, sea turtles, all sea turtles, are protected in the Bahamas. In 2005, the Atlantis Blue Foundation was founded with the mission of saving sea species and their extraordinary habitats. I've come across the exoskeleton of a sea biscuit, which is related to the sand dollar. I'm now in close to the natural reef. In the crevices, grunts and sergeant major fish congregate. And I see the spines of sea urchins tucked away for the day since they forage for algae and other tiny things at night. Peeking out of the side of the stony brain coral, always in twos, is the Christmas tree worm. The back of Dead Man's Reef drops quickly to 30 feet or more. A Goliath grouper goes by. There goes a much larger southern stingray than the juvenile I saw over at the artificial reef. Being on the open ocean side was a bit too rough for me as a snorkeler. I didn't want to become a part of the Dead Man's Reef legacy. And upon my return to the safety of the cove, I was greeted by another green sea turtle. While still on the endangered list, conservation efforts are showing some success. Protection of beach nesting sites, reduction of bycatch by fisheries, 
and prohibition on killing of turtles or harvesting of their eggs have led to the recovery of turtles worldwide and in the Bahamas. Remember how I mentioned earlier that you could walk out to the reef? Well, there's seagrass growing between the shore and the reef, the green sea turtle's main food. So please, don't walk on the grass. Snorkel. You get to see more anyway. It looks like lunchtime for this turtle, but a turtle's day is filled with constant grazing. So it's time for my lunch at the resort's Red Bar.